how's it going? Yo, we're <laughs> um, here. I'm Steve. This is the Voluntary Virtues Network. We're here on the Nook. I'm here with John. That'd be me. Matt. Cheers. Pastor Mike. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Official. <laughs> I'm not drinking anything today, but Matt's got a beer. I'm drinking an arrogant bastard. For some reason, we've never done the arrogant bastard you know, on this. Uh, I find that unbelievable. Right? I, don't, <laughs> I know. I'm pretty sure we did double. I could be wrong. I mean, if I was drinking arrogant bastard, I could have forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember even doing double. Wow. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're fucking up. <laughs> how, we, <laughs> how we haven't covered the bastard series, I am not sure. Yeah, I, I, I would have thought I would have bought it at one point or another too. You know. I don't. I mean, we could go back through it and be wrong, but. Anyway, Arrogant Bastard, if you hadn't ha- haven't had it, try it. It's, it's good shit. It's delicious. Uh, 7.2%. I think it's been 7.2 for quite a while now. Yeah. Very consistent. Uh, hoppy. Something I could drink a lot of. Stone Stone Brew. Yeah. Stone Brewery. Escondido, Escondido. Yes. Very Their good. flag beer, I guess you'd say. Flagship, yeah. Flagship beer. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Bastard series is definitely good. Double Bastard, Lucky Bastard, Oak Derrick and Bastard, all very good. Oak yeah. Derrick and Bastard, I think, is my favorite. Uh, That's why it costs more. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> it's super expensive for a It does months. taste better, though. Yeah, it does. Can't lie about it. They normally sell them in four packs, too. They used to be six pack, and that whole four pack thing is getting me really kind of irritable oh, about man. like inflation and stuff. Yeah, you're all like, like, like what happened like, to my Oh, it's only beers? six bucks. Yeah. Oh wait, there's only four of them now. Damn, they're, a lot of them are the same price though. It's like nine ninety nine for a four pack, and I'm just like, damn. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. They don't want to raise the price; they cut the size down. But that's a different episode. Inflation. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what we were talking about. Uh, that's today. a good. That's a good topic, actually. Yeah, inflation. But uh, really not up. the topic tonight. Yes, yes. another day. Tonight is. Nine eleven. Nine eleven. Like, when do you call nine eleven? That nine eleven? No. Not no? that nine no. eleven. <laughs> September eleventh, two thousand one. For the twelve year olds. <laughs> yes, for the twelve. There are people driving who don't remember that day. Think about that. Yeah, uh, who weren't alive. Yeah, wow. and weren't alive. Yeah. Uh, they, didn't, they, didn't, well, they didn't get to see the propaganda show. Probably not a lot, not though. A lot. Yeah, not that, that'd either. make him like 14. Right. Yeah. And well, I know, but still, like, if you're like 16, 17, 18, you're not, still don't remember that. You're like three or, sure. three or four. Damn yeah. good point there, Mike. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> 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 there, but we ones. Uh, uh, should we I just. Said, I was. Oh, okay. I was shooting a rifle that day. Oh, really? I, I was on a rifle range. Yep. And I remember the the instructors talking about it behind me mm-hmm. as I'm aiming in. Mm-hmm. I thought they were talking about a movie they saw that night. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, shit. Y'all remember the movie Cold Mountain? I don't know that I recall um, this. I want to say I've seen it, but not, like, what happened? It might seem odd that I'm bringing up this movie. Cold Mountain, which is a war between the states. Hmm. War okay, of Northern, yeah, no, war yeah. of Northern no, Aggression no, no, here movie, right? Yeah. Now. So you have uh, Nicole Kidman and, uh, yeah, anyway, Nicole Kidman and a couple of other actors. And there's this uh, scene in the movie where the inv- events unfold that actually cause, you know, Fort Sumter, the whole thing happens. Mm. And I guess the, uh, their state has entered the war against the north and so you've got uh this celebration going on where some of the some of the guys are just around working on a house or whatever and they're they're happy that they're going to war we've got our war or something like that anyway uh i was in the barracks 2001 that morning and just we were about to deploy at, out of fast company virginia uh marine fight fleet anti-terrorism security team so we were kind of doing uh we were in the in that line of work, terrorism, anti-terrorism, and uh, yeah, when the buildings fell, there was like a bunch of celebrations going on, and I go right back every time I see that mountain and just think of how the the lo- that movie Cold Mountain and just the lunacy, the the, the barbarism, the emotions that, that they were so out. excited that yeah. they're gonna go off and like yeah, we're gonna go destroy somebody. Oh you know? man. 
Yeah. In fact, I even think the words that came out of my mouth is uh, "we we yeah. are about to go stomp a mud hole in somebody's face." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, first off, what I I have to say is uh, so jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams. Let's just <laughs> go right in there with that. Um, that being said, my my recollection of, of that was. I had like one of those, it wasn't a rotary phone, but it was an old like avocado green phone that had like a bell in it. So that was my, that was literally like my wake up call at 9-11 was uh, my girlfriend, I was in high school at the time, she lived down the street, she called me and like the phone's ringing, I'm like, this is too early in the morning for this shit, I don't know. You know, I pick up the phone and she's like, turn on the TV, I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, oh my, my, uh, my grandpa was saying that, uh, you know, the two planes hit the Twin Towers and I turn on the TV, I'm like, oh well. This, me as a paranoid libertarian, even at the time, I go, well, I kind of assumed this was going to happen at one point or another. Somebody was going to get pissed and do something like that. All right, you know, but uh, at the time, uh, you know, not going to lie, like, I saw it happen and I didn't critically analyze it. I saw two planes at the towers and then saw them fall down, I assumed. Those two planes must have caused that situation. But, you know, you... But you don't think that's so now? No, no. You know, and that was something to be honest, that I came to kind of rather late in my whole, you know, transition to kind of like looking at the world differently uh, because I just didn't believe that that's something that could possibly have been planned out, that there's just no way. But the more you look into it, the more it got fucked up along the way, too. That works both ways, though. Yeah. Right? That, yeah. that, that reasoning works both ways. Exactly. Like you couldn't do it from a cave. Uh-huh. Nor could you do yeah. cells within the government do yeah. it either, right? So yeah. that works both ways. It's like, well, yeah, it works, you know, one way or another. <laughs> something happened. Yeah, yeah, something happened. I, I mean, the, the other thing along with uh, what you were saying, mm-hmm. two th- uh, jet, fuel, jet fuel not melting, steel beams, uh, two planes don't take down three towers. Right? Yeah. <laughs> two planes. Actually, that was my down. first indication that something, was something wasn't right with <laughs> Building 7. And I didn't hear about Building 7 until a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, yeah, three buildings fell down that day. Yeah. On, uh, well, uh, another one, thing. one was predicted by BBC, apparently, too. I yeah. heard recently, uh, I thought it was interesting, someone suggested that maybe that's where the aircraft that crashed in Shanksville was actually yeah. intended to hit Building 7, but it never made it I've there. heard that, too. That would have been one of those laughable ones, too, kind of up there with the Pentagon, like going like 10 feet above the ground to hit. Yeah, Because they, they would have to dive down so deep to get to that tower that that's much shorter. I mean, if that was the plan, that would have been one, just another, right. you know, obvious thing. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. You know? It fell 900 that. feet short, <laughs> and it still fell. You know? <laughs> so, September 10th, 2001. Rumsfeld gets on TV announcing 2.3. we have $2.3 trillion missing from the Pentagon. Or from the DOD budget. Uh, what the hell? And, the, and then the uh, budget uh, portion of the Pentagon gets hit by a plane the next day. <laughs> I don't know, man. Sounds sketchy to me. Or no black boxes. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's but we one. have passports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the guy nope. who finds the passport is... Uh, the, uh, the chief of police. The, someone well, who, the, the, no, only, someone... the only uh, luggage that was found was of one of the hijackers, and it just happened to contain incriminating evidence. Well, it was stopped, yeah. wasn't it? it wasn't yeah, loaded it didn't on get the on the plane. Right. Yeah. It, was yeah. only, it was only luggage yeah. <laughs> that didn't get on the plane. Yeah. Just so happened to be... Two bags with incriminating evidence in it. Mm, yeah. It would be interesting if Here's you... my question, though. Oh, good. Why, if you're planning on killing yourself in a plane crash, take luggage. why are you taking <laughs> carry on luggage? <laughs> I need these things with me for the 72 virgins. You don't know what he had else in that bag, right? You know, like he could have had all sorts of weird stuff. I mean, no, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And there are Islamic extremists who like to party with. Pink haired hookers and <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, they well were going to like strip clubs and stuff in San Diego before like they decided to you know regain their their devout you know uh, Islam before yeah. they got back on the plane. And I didn't, yeah. So so I don't I don't I'm not exactly sure exactly. Was it 
somebody, like you guys are saying, was it somebody playing it in the government? Was it an outside force? Did the government just allow it? I mean... Right, yeah, so I think uh, that's the three, thing, the three things you have, right? Like, the government didn't know it, the government didn't know it, and was complicit, or allowed it to happen, or the government but ena enabled yeah. it, right, actively enabled. And I'd, I'm on the latter, right? So, uh, I believe components within the government, elements like terrorist cells within their own state uh, actively uh, participated. <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, the George Washington Bridge. Oh, yeah, the... Uh, the there were the Israelis. Yeah, what's right, their, right, what's right. Their, what's their uh, the CIA called? What's called? Mossad. Mossad. Yeah, they, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Stopped on the George Washington Bridge with They're a doing dancing, filming, explosives. right, yeah. Well, no, there, not only that, but there was... Uh, a uh, band filled with explosives stopped on the George Washington Bridge. It was announced on television and everything. I do remember that that day, strangely. Yeah, and yeah, then like, never oh. again has anybody right. heard a word about right. that. Hmm. But you can go on the, I, I can go online and actually see where those Israelis that were detained by the U.S. by the U.S. They had a mural of it. They were ultimately released. And they went to Israel, and they were on Israel. And they were saying that they were there to film the event. You know, like, so they were there to film it. Giving, thereby stating that they had foreknowledge. Uh, huh. Then, um, I mean, Building Seven. You know, the one that didn't get hit by a plane and burned or collapsed, and also melted the steel beams. Apparently, because office fires are also hotter than jet fuel. Apparently, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, there's that. There's a video you all can look up, and I really recommend it just to show you like how like really outlandish the the official story and events of, of what happened was is that the BBC reported the collapse of building 7 20 minutes before it happened while the reporter who's reporting that the building fell down uh, it, it's right behind her left shoulder like she's saying yeah. oh Bill, uh, the Solomon building which is the other name for building 7 has collapsed and it's right behind her left shoulder yeah, it's like 20 minutes prior yeah yeah 20 minutes before it would be like if I said right now like Oh, hey, Matt just went right inside. Right, Steve? Matt's inside? You know, like, he's obviously right he's here. Not. So that's that's how crazy that whole BBC clip is. You're just watching, you're like, it's right And suddenly the, the, the yeah. camera cuts out. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's just, and it gets all, it kind of pixelates, and he's just like, well, I guess the signal cut out. Sorry, um, we'll get back to that later, you know? It, wow. Yeah, it definitely doesn't add up. A lot of, I mean, not to mention uh, Bin Laden being a paid CIA agent in the, in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, he was, getting, he, was getting, he was getting weapons to fight the Russians. It was on their payroll, yeah. Right? yeah, exactly, a proxy war with the Russians. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's a, a pretty well-known, you know, kind of association is that once somebody's in the CIA, they're always in the CIA. Yeah. There's no retiring from the CIA because, sure, you may retire, but if they ever need you for something, you're right back in. So yeah, and we were talking earlier, uh, uh, like one line of reasoning behind it, one one thought is that uh, the whole nine in, nine eleven inside job thing is just like basically a a psyop, and that it's actually Mossad who built within the operation a, a default position, like security position, to fall behind, and that would be. A conspiracy of inside job, which would be further insulate them mm -hmm. and those who were implicated within this supposed inside, are are going to fight like hell to make sure that that front story stays intact. Right. So. Well, I, I think no matter what option it was that actually occurred that we spoke of earlier, I think that the goal was of the U.S. government at least was what has happened so far, the war on terrorism and all the military and com military industrial complex. Well, you could, yeah, I think that's really who was, I'd say, yeah, was behind the, it. Yeah, the corporations you're talking about, because the, the money that's generated, not just the guy, I mean, technically what it boils down to is who's getting paid, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, look the, at the money. Right, right, the defense contract, the defense agencies, defense uh, corporations. And the whole war on, like, terrorism it, it, it itself it has gotten to be such, like, a commonplace thing that they talk about all the time like you try to think back and remember before 
9-11, how often did you hear terrorism like on the news? Like maybe like once a month there'd be, so, you know, there was a car bomb somewhere. Okay, terrorists, whatever. But now every day, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, whatever, you're going to hear it at least once a day. Related to something. Terrorism, terrorism, terrorists, you know, extremists, radicals, whatever, you know. I uh, say and <laughs> Another interesting point is like Silverstein, so Larry Silverstein secures the loan for 99, a 99-year uh, yeah. lease. For the Insurance. World Trade Center complex, yeah, with fourteen point two million dollars of his own money, right? So he put in fourteen point two million. Now, I forget the duration, but this was before nine eleven. But it's not a lot. I think it's like six months. It was when he did. I think six months prior to nine eleven. And then, well, fishy uh, enough time. You know, fishy enough yeah. time, right? Yeah, uh, fourteen point two million dollar buy-in, and upon which he gets, I think it's seven billion dollar return, right? So it's like, yeah, it's crazy, like. It, it, yeah, it was unprecedented. Um, you know, I, I when I'm stuttering. Uh, <laughs> so when uh, is going to work sooner than I thought too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when um, when when this topic is brought up, you know, I, I think so many people, even with confronted with evidence, you know, like say the temperature that steel beams melt at, et cetera, all that sort of stuff, the odds of not just one tower falling, pan pancaking in on itself, but the other two falling in the exact same fashion, the third one not even being hit by a plane, right? Right. Put all that aside, nobody wants, uh, people will still ignore all that because they don't want to believe that the people who are running the show could possibly be that evil. And or, well, they, or, taught, that, or that confident. Well, yeah, well, or we're, that confident. we're taught through the media and through through everything mm -hmm. that you are crazy if you yeah. question it. Right. Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean that that whole cons the whole thing of conspiracy theory being a, a pejorative goes back to the after the Kennedy assassination. Right. That like. With the, they, they went out of their way to make it seem that anybody who says, like, anything to the contrary, they're conspiracy theorists and you know, associate that with being crazy. What's a crazy conspiracy theory is that this idea that 19 hijackers conspired to... Yeah, I don't believe the government's conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a real crazy The government theory. sanctioned conspiracy theory, right? Yes. That they got, they got, you know, box cutters and yeah. were, you Which know. Which were illegal to carry on the planes at the time anyway. And, you know, on, on top of that, like, I just don't believe that, like, a box cutter is going to stop a plane full of people. Now, and then, then, then there's the, you know, the whole thing with Flight 93. I believe that they, that there are people on the plane and they said, all right, you know, let's get them. Okay, but... For some reason, why didn't that happen with the other two planes? You know what I mean? Like, is it was just everybody's like, oh, shit, they've got box cutters. We better sit back and do what they say. Like, that's just, that's so weird. Well, and then all the phone that's call things that don't add up. Phone calls that couldn't have been made. Couldn't have been made, right, yeah. Yeah, but, but they claim were made to support the official story, right? Yeah. But, you know, about it, you know, about, you know, is it really possible for, you know, people like that to be so nefarious and really plan something like that out? I sometimes make the analogy of, uh, of World War II and the atom bombs. Uh, they didn't need to drop the first one, that's for sure. I mean, these were, you know, civilians. Like, it's, one, it's not a targeted attack. It is well, a whole city. You want, you want to hear another crazy one they, were, they uh, didn't actually go through with, but were where, uh, they designed and planned and everything? Uh, Did you hear about the bat bomb? No, that sounds really, the U yeah. The U.S. government had tr um, basically made a, K uh, a, uh, a bomb that they were going to drop that had, was filled with bats. These bats had incendiary devices Whoa, on them. Whoa, okay. Right? All right. So, <laughs> yeah, so they were going to drop this device, and um, the bats were supposed to fly into, like, houses or all, all, sor like, all sorts of areas, like, all, all over the city, basically. Right, yeah, because right? would houses. Um, and then after fire. a time, those incendiary devices would go off, uh, lighting everything on fire. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. But, you know, so they, they, drop, so they drop one bomb, you know? And then, and, and, and look this up, seriously, like, when I read this, it, it, you know, it, it makes you queasy almost instantly. Truman knew that they were going to surrender... Before he dropped the second bomb, and he right. did it anyways. Like, right. think about no, that. No, they did Before, surrender. They did they, surrender. They had surrendered. Yeah, and they, they hadn't gotten the tape yet. Is that what it was? Like, no, no, no. Yet. Okay. He's, he, 
they they wanted uh, Jap- uh, Japan wanted conditions like the emperor got to stay in power and stuff mm. like that, and they said, no, it's unconditional surrender or nothing. Mm-hmm. Of course, after they dropped the bombs and Japan unconditionally surrendered, they got all the concessions that they wanted in the first place anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, like, there's there's some really, really bad people out there, and sometimes they... You heard why this, they did it the same time, though? Uh, I, guess, I guess I was a little bit off on that. I thought I, that it was, yeah. I, I heard it was to say, here's Soviet Union. We can do this all day long. Oh, well, right. it's a possibility. Yeah, so right? it wasn't yeah. a wasn't a one time fluke. We yeah. got we got more. <laughs> You've got more than one of these, <laughs> right? So yeah. for for another uh, five years, you know, it's like four years. There's only one superpower on the entire face of the globe. The planet has only one superpower yeah. for four years. You know, yeah. Yeah. there was nothing to check U.S. authority. Isn't supposed it? authority. They didn't even know what really was going to happen the first time they they set one of those off. Yeah, there was there was theories going around that it would like it would destroy the, the fabric of the universe. <laughs> yeah. and stuff. It, it could light the atmosphere. There was all sorts of shit going. On. They didn't really know. Yeah. I mean, they were, the, the math had just been figured out. That's gotta yeah. be a nervous guy pushing that button. Like, <laughs> will this destroy the whole universe? You know, like, does he bite his knuckle when he does it? Like, Very you fun. know. Like, I think the by the time back. they dropped the bomb, most of those. Years were gone. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, because they had already done tests. Plus, the guy dropping the bomb, sure, I'm sure, wasn't privy to those yeah. conversations. <laughs> <laughs> you with the helmet and rifle, push that button. Thanks. Exactly. <laughs> There's four other planes, and only one of y'all had the real armor. You know, yeah. the bomb, so you know what you know that you what you're doing, right? Um, you know, and then uh, I, I guess back to 9/11, like you know the. Uh, the 9/11 Commission report. You know, I mean, oh, that that's up that's up there with uh, you know with JFK and the uh, uh, Warren Commission. You yeah. know, of just nonsense. Just doesn't make sense. You, you know, uh, whatever you know, like wild theory that they had come up with for Building Seven was just not even really looked at by anybody. It was done by like a, the National something NIST is what NIST, the yeah. uh, abbreviation but, for it. But is. they leave that out. I mean, it was. Yeah, they it did just, make the 9-11 commission report. Yeah, yeah. no, they, it did not. They did a uh, report on it after, uh, years after. Right. And they, they didn't explain, like, none of their stuff made any sense. I, I think it's still... The, they uh, classified it. They classified the actual model they used right, right. to create the... Uh, the model to explain of the, the, the collapse. Yeah, right, yeah. I, I, I've seen a uh, visualization of their model. And, and, and so it's it just insane that it, it doesn't the collapse that they portray does not match the videos you see at all. Right. I mean, there Actually, are videos. I remember seeing the video too. Yeah, I remember it's video fucking insane. Too. There are videos where you can clearly see the columns blowing out on there. I mean, there that's they, I've seen people show like overlaying where the columns are. Right. That's clearly where they are. Right. Um, and uh, architects and engineers for nine eleven right. have excellent, done it. Excellent documentary. Yeah, uh, they've. Uh, there's a I think Richard Gage did a analysis of um, the collapse of Building Seven, and it f- falls at free fall speed, right. meaning there's no resistance. Right. If there's no resistance, that means that there's nothing holding it up. Right. So, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't add up? None of it. And uh, you, you you mentioned the passport, you know, uh, that's uh, is that is that a trend? Like, isn't that, that's happening with like other terrorist uh, situations, right, where it's just like, oh, they left their ID in the car. Just so <laughs> happens we have this like, guy's ID with his social security yeah, number. Yeah, even recently in France, the... Yeah, yeah, uh, the Charlie right? Hebdo yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they, uh, you know, they, you know, perfectly left their ID in the, like, you know, the, the passenger front seat or something. Like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> that's so weird. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the, the more, like, you kind of, you know, like... The, the only um, but this yeah go ahead yeah the, the only problem uh, I I see with you know the whole nine eleven truth thing and it's not really a problem but it's it, it's it's something that should be mentioned that well okay so like you have, the other analogy to nine eleven is is JFK right there's still like JFK conspiracy meetings that you can go to like to this day and I mean yeah sure that's interesting and you know and uh, you know, you'll you'll meet good people and you know have a nice conversation, but you know all it does is kind of end up with like different ideas, 
and nothing really kind of comes up of it. So like I've looked at 9/11 a little bit, but I can't you know get obsessed with it because right, right. what I saw was three towers go down. Right. And I'm assuming there were 19 hijackers in there in those planes. But other than that, I don't know. And so I just look at it, try to look at it objectively, and go, well, whatever they're saying, just that shit doesn't add up. So you know. And then, yeah, exactly. So you would else you can access though is like testimonies of the whistleblowers that's, yeah right so you, and that's like dozens of them that you never hear of if you just if you're tuned in only to mainstream media mainstream network news then you would never hear about those people right? yeah. as actual real whistleblowers yeah and i think it's so long after the event actually happened that and no matter what really came out, would anybody ever lose their job, ever get be punished, and anything ever actually occur to change the situation? It's more, it's more about being aware that when there are situations going on, you know, maybe record what's happening, record what you're being told, uh, may, you know, keep evidence of everything. And be, was their story straight? What, right. what really, you know, because that's what we really yeah. look at now is who was telling the story right. from what perspective and. You know, really keep track of all that. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the commission, some of the commissioners, uh, one resigned saying it was rigged from the top or, or interfered from with it, from the President of the United States, and then six of the other commissioners were like, this is either set up to fail or, you know, this is this is canned or whatever. They all had negative things to say about the And then the, uh, the congressional aides that were typing up the... the Report they they jokingly called it like the Warren Commission or something like that like as as amongst themselves as they were right. typing it up right. and they would like pass around little memos about it like this so even the like you know the you know the the guy who's like on some internship is sitting there typing up this shit laughing his ass off like really you know yeah. okay yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly uh, so so let me ask this question all right why should I care um why should you care uh because it, it, it's like any other historical event. You know, y you want to have a good perception of what has happened in history, you know. So as to, you know, from what's happened in history, history we can learn uh, what's going to happen in the future because it, you know, doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes, right? So things like 9-11. It rhymes? These, R history rhymes. History rhymes. History it doesn't, doesn't repeat, repeat itself, itself, but it rhymes. But it rhymes. You know? it, similar things happen. It doesn't follow the same <laughs> yeah. storyline. So, um, yeah, that's why, I mean... At least I, somebody, maybe not you, but someone has to carry mm -hmm. that, right? It's, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's detrimental to the, uh, to the idea of liberty if we choose to not pay attention to the conspiratorial merits of history, right? And, and, or to the idea that you've got people that would go to this extent to gain the reins of power, you know? I think that's why we. Yeah, I mean, a lot of loss of liberty happened around and that. That caused a lot of loss. Look at the Patriot Act. I mean, oh yeah, the Patriot right. Act written before nine eleven. Yes. And so like, right, you right, know, right, right. not too long after nine eleven, they're like, hey, we have this like, you know, mm -hmm. how many pages was it? It's it's a big thousands. Yeah, it's coming. Don't bother out. reading it. It, it. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> thousand page thing. Like, hey, you guys got to pass this because terrorism. Yeah, you know, like hurry up. It's. It's even called the Patriot Act, so... Yeah, that should be a big red flag, because usually... You're, if, if, you, you know. if you vote against it, obviously you're an American. Yeah, and usually when the government says it's called one thing, it's usually the exact opposite or somewhere around there. You know? So, Patriot Act, think of it as Tyranny Act, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> opposite, you know? Uh, but, uh... So... You know, there was, there was the... Um, there was an audit thing going on in Building 7, right? You know? And so that was allegedly something that was being covered up with the collapse of it. And But what if there's, like, secret laboratory in there, you know, where they're working on, you know, they're working on some stuff that, you know, may have something to do with, like, sentient AI, you yeah. know? Oh, wow. the, the Pentagon? Wow. Like yeah, you know, Pentagon maybe they're... I mean, I know that's kind of a new conspiracy, but okay. I don't know. Let's... Okay. <laughs> doesn't mean it's, it's true. It's saying be, it came out of my head. Would they be pumping out sentient androids from this underground They base? could, and, you know, the only people who would be able to avoid You're talking sentient... robot sex slavery, aren't you? 
I mean, the that only sounds people, like something the Pentagon would be. Yeah, into. I mean, the only people who could afford that sort of stuff is some people who got like you know billions of dollars, right? So you think 9/11 was a conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> to cover up robot sex trade? You're putting words in my mouth. That it's a possibility. <laughs> So that may be not I, I, what you I don't think. know about that one. Okay, I may have taken that. I may have, I may <laughs> may have, have gone assumed a lot with that. Yeah. Have, <laughs> yeah. But maybe maybe another episode because I looked yeah. at the timer over here that I placed oh, earlier. Yeah. yeah. It looks like it's running out. Yeah. yeah. Very out of time. Well, Next peace. episode. Next Soon. week. Cheers. Have a good one. Oh. oh.